All right, so in addition to the formulas, there's also a number of ways we can display probabilities. So the first of those probability displays is a discrete probability distribution. We'll see these a bit more in part five as well. So a discrete variable, just as a reminder, is one that takes a set number of values, right? So usually countable. So in this case, you can see the different outcomes, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So in this case, we can actually write down every single probability for each of those corresponding values. So in this case, we're looking at a commuter passing through five traffic lights on her way to work each day. And so this is the number of red lights she'll hit and the probabilities of that. So same thing we had when we were counting up the number of shirts guessed correctly. That was also a discrete distribution. So you can see in this distribution we're missing one value. But most students see right away that this all should sum, right? If this is five lights that she can go through, the most she can hit is, or the least she can hit is none. That's the best possible situation. And she could hit all of them. So this is every possible outcome. If you think about this, this is our sample space. So all of these together, they should sum to one. So we can figure out if we add all this stuff together and subtract from one, then we'll figure out exactly what the missing value is here for three, which appears is 0.15. So in addition to creating one of these or filling in a missing value or checking to see if one's legitimate, another thing we can do is that we can answer questions about probabilities based on this table. So in this case, suppose we're gonna select one trip. What is the probability that she hits at least three red lights? So if we wanted to actually use probability notation for this, we would have to maybe define some event, like event A is hitting at least three, right? And so we have to go A is that she hits, well, at least three means three, four, or five. And then we have to realize these are all disjoint because she can't hit three and four lights in that same trip. She can only hit three or four. So we're just going to add all of these things that fall into at least three together. More likely that we don't use the A notation when we're talking about discrete probability distributions. And again, we'll see this in part five. So for now, it's just a bit of a detail. We have the probability and we'd use x to equal the number of red lights because that's what it has here and we'd say is greater than or equal to three and then again this is three four and five so this would be 0 0.15 0 0.15 0 0.05 0 0.35 cool um, I can ask these in a little more uh, I don't know less numbery sort of ways uh, what is the probability that she doesn't hit all so all would be, as we said, five. So not hitting all would be everything else. Basically five complement. Again, if you want to use the X notation, she doesn't hit five, which is all the other ones. And you could either do this as one minus the probability of five or adding a bunch of things together. I'd do the one minus because that's a little simpler. Cool. So again, we'll see more of these in part five for now. This is just a brief introduction and one way that we could display our probabilities.